The last week or so has been an absolute whirlwind for the Pokemon franchise. Not only seeing the release of the highly anticipated Crown Tundra expansion for Pokemon Sword and Shield, but also having Pokemon Sword and Shield's beta leaked out onto the internet. This leak occurred on the eve of the Crown Tundra's release and was reported on by Centro Pokemon Leaks on Twitter, who you can check out with the link in the description if you would like to know more about the leak specifically. The leak has since essentially confirmed to be real and has some very interesting details as far as cut content goes. In addition to this, there was also a little bit of cut content that may have been found about the Crown Tundra as well shortly after its release, so in today's video we are going to be covering all of that. It's going to be a really interesting one with a lot of really cool stuff to go over, so without any further ado, let's dive right in. So amongst the stuff we're going to be talking about today, there's really only one piece of cut content from the Crown Tundra, which obviously is to be expected considering it only came out a week ago, but nevertheless, it is very interesting. Courtesy of Matt Yukana on Twitter, it was revealed via data mining that Peony's daughter, Peonia, despite not ever being battled directly and only ever being an ally to the player in Max Raid Battles, actually has a battle intro animation as if she was intended to be battled originally. Now, while it can't technically be considered 100% certain that this is indicative of a planned battle with Peonia that was cut, because things can be put into the games that are unused for a variety of reasons, it is very likely given the polish of the animation, which is a really interesting detail considering the effect it could have had on the Crown Tundra story overall, and the implication of what was planned differently for it than we saw in the final release. However, moving on to the main Pokemon Sword and Shield beta, as I stated earlier, this was first publicized onto the internet on the eve of the Crown Tundra's release about a week ago, and contains a number of very interesting details as far as cut content goes. Probably the most interesting bit of cut content that was seen in this batch of leaks has to do with the beta title screen for Pokemon Sword. This beta build of Pokemon Sword and Shield is circa mid-2018, and probably the most interesting thing from it is the beta title screen for Pokemon Sword specifically. On the title screen, not only can we see a beta logo for Pokemon Sword, but we can also see a number of Pokemon who were cut from Pokemon Sword and Shield specifically, including Greninja and Arceus just to name a few. We can even see Mega Rayquaza on the title screen here, which even implies the presence of Mega Evolution in Pokemon Sword and Shield, something that did not happen in the final games. Now while I will say that this definitely does imply that these Pokemon could have originally been planned for the game at one time, it's also very very likely that this is just a placeholder image. The game is very much in a placeholder type of state, if you will, at this stage, and it's also very unlikely that having Mega Rayquaza and Arceus was the plan for the final game just sitting on the title screen willy nilly. So while it's impossible to jump to one conclusion or the other as far as what this title screen means in terms of what kind of content was planned for the games at this stage, it still is very, very interesting in terms of what could have been for the Generation 8 titles. Another really cool thing that was in the Pokemon Sword and Shield beta leak, according to Centro Pokemon Leaks who publicized it, that got cut from the final game was full camera control throughout the entire game. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, you have full control of the camera in places like the Wild Area, the Isle of Armor, and the Crown Tundra, however, throughout the rest of the Galar region, the camera is fixed. However, according to this beta leak, that was originally not planned to be the case, and it was intended that you would have full control over the entire camera throughout the entire region. This is obviously a pretty big reveal, because to hear that we were originally going to have full camera control throughout the entire game but didn't get it is somewhat disappointing even though the fixed camera worked just fine. 
Many people believe that this, along with some other cuts that were made, were made due to a lack of development time for Sword and Shield, because they're obviously pretty big games being on the Switch and all, however they were given the same 3 year time frame that basically all mainline Pokemon games have had. So it's a popular theory out there that originally a lot more was planned for Sword and Shield and a lot more was going to be put into it that ultimately had to be left out because it had to fit the three year time window. We will probably never know for sure whether or not this is true, but regardless, to know that something like this was planned for the game and was ultimately cut is pretty interesting and a little bit disappointing at the same time. Moving on though, here is something that is kind of mind-blowing. At the time of this beta's creation, it seems like the Rotom Dex was going to continue to be a thing instead of being implemented into the Rotom phone like we see in the final game. We can tell this by the Rotom Dex-esque map in the bottom right corner of the screen of various screenshots. However, in addition to that, it also seems like they were going to introduce a female Rotom Dex as well thanks to this image that was seemingly found amongst the data mine of the beta. This once again, just like everything else, was reported by Centro Pokemon Leaks, and it seems to be the case that you may have got this female Rotom if you chose the female player character at the start of the game. And all I've gotta say is thank goodness they decided to cut this, because this definitely doesn't seem like the kind of thing that would have been accepted very well, and it overall just seems kinda silly in my opinion. And while not the biggest thing in the world, we also get to see some early badge designs in the beta as well. They don't differ too much in appearance compared to the way the badges look in the final game, but nevertheless there are some key changes and it's really interesting to see something even as small as this get some development and some change put into it over time. And last but not least, we're going to end off with a rather significant inclusion as well, and that would be the presence of a giant Pokemon statue located on Route 7. Amongst the various images that were leaked was one of an early build of Route 7 itself, and on the bridge section of this route that overlooks the barren face of a small mountain in the original beta form seems to have included some type of statue or carving of some kind of Pokemon. For me personally, it's hard to make out what kind of Pokemon this is supposed to be, but it seems to be the case that there was going to be some sort of Pokemon monument on this cliffside that was completely omitted in the final game and replaced with the rather plain cliffside. Considering the final version of this area is once again kind of plain, it is somewhat disappointing, especially because it seems like this giant carving could have had something to do with the story of the game as well, particularly the Dynamax side of things. We see a lot of images of large Pokemon throughout the Gala region, like the giant cliffside drawing of Gigantamax Toxtricity or the giant statue of Dugtrio near Stoenside, so it seems like this was going to be another one of those and could have had some implications on the story if it ended up getting cut like we see in the final game. Hopefully we find out more about this someday because we don't really have a lot of information on what all of this stuff truly means, but to know that it was once there at one point is certainly very fascinating either way. Those were just some of the highlights from this Pokemon Sword and Shield beta leak, however, so if you would like to see more detail on it specifically, you can once again check out Central Pokemon Leaks on Twitter, whose link will be in the description. Pokemon Sword and Shield and Generation 8 as a whole are also very young still, not even a year old at the time of this video's creation, so it's possible we could see more in the future, and you can definitely bet on the fact that I will be covering it if that does ever happen. If you guys enjoyed this video though, be sure to leave a like and let me know all your thoughts about the leak in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more Pokemon content all the time. You can also support this channel if you would like by checking out my Pokemon remixes on Spotify and other music streaming services, and checking out my Pokemon Cardinal project if you haven't yet, right here on YouTube. With that being said, I'll be back very soon with another video, so until then, as always, I love you guys, and I will smell you guys later.